from the morning reading. While we remain with a long-term bullish bias until proven otherwise, we're certainly looking for any indication of a forthcoming bullish reversal in the daily market internals. From that, Dow theory followers are likely taking note that the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or DJT, its current status is um, certainly not looking very healthy. Unlike most of the previous tests of the inflection level, yesterday's occurred off a lower high, which speaks to a lack of buying in the sector. Second, the price range of the DJT has shifted lower during the past six weeks and has caused a negative slope in both the 20-day and 50-day moving averages. These negative slopes increase the probability of a forthcoming bearish trend. Based on Dow theory, further downside by Dow Jones Transportation will put a limit to any upside experience by the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And if the DJX trades down to new swing lows in the daily chart, this would be a signal of a move more downside risk for the broader market. So certainly that's something to kind of keep an eye on. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.41 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of May the 14th, 2015. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. Let's dive in and see what happened in the overnight. Generally positive, all four of our broad market indices are up about half a percent, with perhaps the NASDAQ being the strongest as of the time of this cut, but they're all pretty well tightly packed. You have crude oil up just marginally, about 0.2 of a percent. For those of you who are crude oil traders, be aware um, you have crude oil futures contract rollover is imminent. Then you have the euro up about 0.68 percent. Bonds essentially scratch, and then finally gold uh, scratch as well. In terms of overseas action very very quiet in Asia China scratch Hong Kong just marginally above scratch Japan though was down about one percent Germany scratch and then finally the United Kingdom also scratch so not a lot of energy with the exception of Japan in the overseas markets though our own markets were up um, you know fairly significantly bullish thus far now obviously at 730 you have the weekly unemployment report that could inflect the markets and change this early view in terms of the macroeconomic reports for today you do of course have those unemployment claims other than that uh, really natural gas storage if you're a trader in that market now obviously um, this is a yellow flag report but there is a 30-year bond auction and I highlight that because the bonds have been under significant pressure in recent trading sessions so um, that might be a little more important this week than perhaps some weeks then also on um, coming up tomorrow capacity utilization rate industrial production um, and then during the market hours University of Michigan consumer sentiment. That would uh, pretty much wrap up the week in terms of headline macroeconomic reports. In terms of our current volatility conditions, uh, we have been decreasing of late. You look at the five day average true range versus the 10 day. Um, things have been calming down. The short term VIX is a 13.49. We noted, um, I believe it was yesterday, how many standard deviation moves we've actually had in the last couple of weeks we did not have any standard deviation moves yesterday um, but um, as we go into options expiration um, and of course um, we've got a number of internals that kind of point that we could have an uptick in volatility we're always kind of sitting and waiting for that 
Um, but that being said, we've had quite a bit, at least on the S&P, quite a bit of price movement, if a not and dear, something that would cause fear. You see um, short-term VIX, 13.49, IV percentiles, 21, 17, 26, 26, um, really all basically in the lower quartile. So nothing really extraordinary um, from that note at this point. On our daily report, we still continue with this phase five. The last um, significant event on our daily chart was the breaking of diagonal and horizontal support. And we have not yet um, established a new high. Uh, we have certainly a number of signals that continue to warm, but there's a lot of conflict in this. I mean, you've got IBD status, at market and correction, and yet GMI index continues to strengthen. It, it gave a buy signal on 511, and um, this you know, is now five out of six. It is continuing to show stronger and stronger setups. The intermediate term market posture has also turned bullish, and really, if you look across all four of the indices, things actually strengthened yesterday. Um, you have... Um, outright bullish conditions in the S&P as well as the Dow. NASDAQ turned into a normal bullish condition yesterday having climbed up over the 50 threshold and uh, even the Russells put together a few days of um, you know bullish conditions and now is um, a weak bull. So it's um, you know kind of mixed I mean you have this market correction you have this high distribution day count and yet you have other things to point to that would seem to say that not so worrisome uh, as I opened up obviously you have that Dow Jones and let's see if we can quickly pull that chart up DJT Let's see if it wants a dollar sign. There we go. Let's get an easier chart for you to take a look at. There we go. But you look at this recent pattern and, and you know look at all these touches down here and you know moving averages have come down obviously this is on the verge of a breakdown now it could of course um, and many times we talk about increased risk increased hedge risk levels these kinds of things and so often what you see is that is support and that's where institutions come in we could very well see the same thing on this microcosm we could see uh, once again a support come in and for the transportations to take off uh, you could blame part of this pullback yesterday on um, the train derailment and uh, its influence on the industry but Bottom line is um, we're at a, an important point for those of you who are followers of the Dow Jones theory that transportations are an important tell on the broader market. If this really breaks down in a significant way, it's hard to believe that we would have a significant uptrend in the immediate future on our broad market indices. So watch these um, lower highs and this support line this could be an important um, area to watch during the day okay and then uh, let's get back to here in terms of our um, uh, regular opinions no change in the opinions from yesterday option income strategies got to still keep an eye for the increasing volatility and the fact that you have a market correction situation from IBD covered calls really not looking to initiate new bullish um, covered call strategies I, in fact I shut down a couple of them yesterday um, took some profits but did not want to roll them over and continue with them in a market with a market and correction situation um, so I'll look to simply re-enter new positions once the situation stabilizes same thing with put selling I have um, pretty much wound down um, as opportunities to take profits presented themselves and a vast majority of my put selling um, positions and I'm talking about put selling on, you know, core puts on against um, a 
basket of stocks that normally I'd be willing to own. Well, frankly, if we do break down, I think I could reposition for better entries and would not want to take ownership of a bunch of stocks in a market and correction situation. I'd want to wait for better conditions to initiate that. So I myself have gotten very conservative in terms of option income strategies. I am still doing option income strategies, but they're big broad ones that are on the monthly time frame or they're um, you know, high probability setups with um, far out of the money put credit spreads and the like. Same thing with cover calls, winding down and not initiating new ones, winding down and not initiating new put selling. Now, if we break up, then I lost an opportunity. But considering the, um, you know, I pay a lot of attention to the work from IBD and considering this IBD status of market and correction, it clearly there are warning signs here that is not a great time to be initiating lots of new positions and certainly I've been reflecting my own portfolio along those lines. So we are still in hedge warning status level two which is a red light and um, so my trading has been certainly in alignment with that. Should be enough of that for today. As always, if you find what you're getting here helpful, we appreciate you liking us on YouTube and sharing us with your trader community. More information is available at the website. Performance matters. We get that. We are very transparent with a complete trade journal, uh, real-time chat, as well as um, you know measuring this performance of everything that we model in the room. And then disclaimers, as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review this. And we thank you and we look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow in the Falcon Global Trading Community uh, Market Preview.